All right, so Foundations of Math 20, 5.3, uh, standard deviation. We're gonna, we've talked about measures of central tendency before. Uh, when we look at data and we look at all of those big mess of numbers, right, um, there are certain ways that we can break them down to understand what they mean to us. And <coughs> what we've done in sections previous is we've talked about the average, um, the uh, number that shows up the most often is the mode, the middle number when you arrange them from smallest to largest or the other way around, largest to smallest, the very middle number or the average of the two middle numbers is the median. Those are all good indications of, you know, sort of what the group is doing. The one uh, example that I, that I gave you before is um, two different classes in the same school could have the exact same average as far as the collection of marks, but the dispersion of those marks could be very different. So for example, if the average is 82, uh, one class could have all the marks, all the marks giving that average could be, could have a range of maybe 80 to 84. All right. The other class that has the exact same average of 82 could have a range of marks that contribute to that average of say 30 percent to 100. So that's, those are two different, very different classes, right? And so how do we know, just looking at the average, what kind of uh, dispersion we have? The answer is we don't know. That's why we're looking at 5.3. That's why we're looking at something called standard deviation. So um, uh, again, if we look at marks, so here's, a, here's an example where we have uh, uh, you know, different marks on a chemistry, uh, chemistry classes, okay? So if you look at class A, the range is looks like from about 60, uh, sorry, 56 to 94. The range here is from 74 to 84. Okay, so the range is quite narrow here; it's quite small, and the range here in class A is quite large. They may have the same average, but it's, it's the standard deviation that tells us about the dispersion. So uh, let's first take a look at this this term, deviation. Okay, so what is standard deviation? What does deviation mean? Deviation is the difference between a data value and the mean for the same set of data. Okay, so it's the difference between, and I'll put this up here in our notes, the difference between a data value, so that is one of the uh, items, the collection of, in the collection of numbers, between that and the mean. Okay, so that's how, how far we're deviating from the average is, a, is the deviation. <laughs> and that's for one data set. And so that would be written or expressed, um, would be expressed like this. It would be the, the measure, and, uh, and again, it doesn't matter if it's above or below, but if you take the data point, the mark on the test, let's say, and you subtract the average, okay, that's the deviation. So if we're not talking about positive or negative, you could consider it as an absolute value and it's just the difference between those two values. Okay? And I should note too, and it is in your textbook, I'll just maybe mention that as well, right here, the symbol X bar, so that's X with a line on top, that means the average or the mean. Okay? So if you want to jot this down, if you've never seen that before, um, that's a, that might be a good idea as well. So the symbol X bar, represents the mean. Let's see if we can get that on there. Okay. Any questions so far? Deviation, X bar, mean. Okay. So the standard deviation, this is what we talk about when we talk about how how much a collection of of data are dispersed. So if we take a look at our textbook down here, here is standard deviation. And I think it's a good idea for us just to uh, walk through uh, this definition, okay? So standard deviation. The standard deviation, we'll make this a little bigger for those of you in the back. The standard deviation, it's a measure of dispersion or the scatter of data values in relation to the mean. So it's a measure of dispersion of the data relating to the mean. A low standard of deviation, low standard deviation, indicates that most of the data values are close to the mean. And that would be the example of that, that class that 
you know, the average is 82 and the, the range, all the class, all the, the, the percents are between 80 and 84, let's say. That's a very low standard deviation. A high standard deviation, think about high deviation, right? So we're highly deviating from the mean, so it's really, sp the, the data is really spread out. So it means that there's uh, a lot more scatter further from the mean, okay? So it's a measure of a group of items, a group of numbers that, uh, you know, it's a measure of their dispersion from the average. So our average on the test I just mentioned was 80% on that last test, right? And so I don't know what the standard deviation, but we're gonna, we could maybe calculate that. I won't post everybody's marks, so maybe we won't do our exact class. But we could calculate what our standard deviation is. And what that would tell us is, is there a huge disparity between the lowest mark and the highest mark in general, not just the range, but in general? Or is everyone kind of at the same level? You know, that, that's what it would tell us, and that's what it would tell me. I mean, I don't need to pump in the formula to know, you know, that we have a, a wide range, uh, you know, of marks here. I, I marked the test, so I know there are some rather low and some, you know, pretty high. So I'm not sure what the range was, but everyone was kind of scattered in a wider, uh, you know, range for this test. Any questions so far on that? You get that? Okay, so you may be wondering how do we calculate the standard deviation um, for, for data? And so there is a formula here, and I'm going to show you the formula, and then we're going to um, give it a try. Okay? So this is the formula right here, and this looks kind of complicated, doesn't it? There, is a, there are a couple, of, uh, uh, a couple of Greek letters here, and so that's why it looks a little funny, but I will explain this formula here uh, right now as well. Okay? So let's see if I can put that on the side. All right. Can you guys see that at the back? Probably not. Okay. There we go. So the formula for finding the standard deviation uh, in a set of values looks like this. First of all, this is the Greek letter sigma. It's lowercase sigma. Okay. And... Uh, it, uh, th this represents the standard deviation, okay? So you'll see the standard deviation is right here, this sigma value. I shouldn't write on top of that sigma value. Oops. So as we continue through the formula, we have the square root, okay, of what's underneath here. Well, you recognize this, don't you? Okay? This is the difference between a data value and the mean. This uh, right here is uh, the uppercase sigma uh, in the Greek letter, I believe. I'm just having mind blank right now, but that, that's uppercase. What that means is summation, okay? It means that we add up all of this right behind it. So we add up all of these for each data point. So this is going to be for x1, then x2, then x3, then x4, and so on. And what we do is we take the difference of each data value and we subtract the mean, and then we square it. So it doesn't matter if this is, uh, you know, if the data value is above the mean or below the mean, it doesn't matter because we're going to square it anyways. So this is going to be all be positive. And we basically take um, this and we divide it by the number of terms. So there's a bit of an average here dividing by the number of terms. So once again, square root of each data point. So in this case, with our test marks, you take test number one, you subtract the mean, whatever that difference is, you square it. Then you add to that test two minus the mean, square it. You add to that again test three minus the mean and square it. Okay? And then you divide all that, you get that sum, and so that would be the measure of that dispersion. You divide it by n and take the square root of it, and that is your standard deviation. Okay? Now we will talk as we move through the chapter. We'll talk about um, you know, the normal distribution curve and what standard deviation sort of looks like. But you should get a standard deviation um, between 0 and 3 sort of thing. So that's kind of what it'll end up uh, to be. Um, you know, one standard deviation, two standard deviations, um, th this sort of thing from the mean. It is. You're not going to get a high number like 50 or 1,000 or something like that, okay? So let's give it a test. Um, we'll start with some smaller numbers. And, uh, yeah, we'll see if we can 
uh, figure out what that uh, standard deviation is. Okay? All right, so what we want to do is we want to find the standard deviations for, um, for each of these classes. So let me just, let me just move that right over here. Okay, so find the standard deviations for each of these classes, class A and class B. First thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to find the average, right? You see the X bar here, that's the average. We need to know that for each class. So let's do one class at a time. Um, let's maybe do class A down here first. And so X bar, the, the mean is, of course, we add up. And you don't have to write this on your paper. Just go ahead and do that with your calculator right now. I'll, sh I'll, I'll write down exactly what you should be doing. Um, but we're going to add up all the numbers, and then we're going to divide by the number of numbers we added up. Okay, so for A, maybe you could let me know if we have the agreement of two or three witnesses here. We can make some kind of assessment on this average. So if you have a number here that's agreed upon. So what's the average there? Anybody want to calculate that yet? Any numbers? Sorry? 78? It's okay, 0. .0. Let's be exact. 78.0? Okay, 78.0. Okay, good. I noticed on the test, too, some of you rounded numbers too early in the questions, and so actually um, you might have lost half a mark uh, if you did that because your final answer might have been just a tenth or, or, or a rounded off to a nearest unit. It might have been off. So don't, let's use all our decimals. So this is 78.0. It's agreed? Okay. All right, so that's going to be our X bar. So if we flesh this out here, the standard deviation is going to be, let's work on, let's work on this now. Just, let's just pick one, and we'll see how this works. So for the first test, it's going to be 94. So we simply do 94 minus 78, and I'm going to square that. Okay. So 94 minus 78 is what? That's 16. So squared is... Two fifty-six. Okay, so that's our first number for the first test. So now we do the rest of them. And again, anywhere on your paper, if you want to showing all your work, this is what you would do. Um, you probably don't have to show this for each calculation, uh, but like I say, a sample calculation to communicate would be fine. But now we're going to do fifty-six minus seventy-eight, and we're going to square that. Okay, and so this difference would be what? Okay, so 22. So what's 22 squared? 480. Yeah, 484. Okay. And so then we do this for the final, final three. Okay. Okay, so if we've done our, our algebra or our, our mathematics right here, we've got um, all of these parts here for each test. Now we need to focus on the next part, which is the sum of them. So that's no problem. We just add all these up. So go ahead and take a few moments to do that. Add those all up. And then again, we want to find the average, really, of this. So we want to divide by n as well. And there, of course, are 5. So add those up. Divide by 5. 203.6. Anybody else get that? Yes? A couple nods. OK, so where are we at then? Let's, let's shove this down here. So right now we've got our sigma equals the square root of, and I'm um, sorry, you have to give me that number again, 2, 202.6. 203. 203, sorry. 203. So 203.6. And then we take the square root of that. Does that look right? Okay, what do we get for an answer here? Sorry? 14.26. Okay. Is that agreed upon? Okay. Um, I, I do have to go back to what I said before. I apologize. Uh, I said that these numbers shouldn't be too, too great. I was thinking of actually something different. Um, one to three standard deviations from the mean is where all the data should uh, should fall. So we'll talk about that a little bit later. But when we have numbers of tests like this, this does mean that this is sort of um, the average dispersion rate. So when we're talking about percents and high numbers like this, you could have a higher number. 
Um, and again, I apologize, but that'll come later. That was actually in a different lesson, so I shouldn't have said anything like that. But you can have this little sigma, this right here, uh, can be higher numbers. If your numbers are high, like if you're talking about numbers in the hundreds or thousands, you could have a, a deviation that would be large as well. So it, it means kind of the, the general dispersion. Okay, so let's pause. Let's, uh, let's do the same thing for B, and we'll just see what, what its uh, standard deviation is going to be. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of let you do B. I'm going to give them a pause this for a few minutes. Uh, you do B, and we'll see what we come up with for a standard deviation for that set. All right, so the standard deviation for the second set should, should be about 3.61, I believe. Is that uh, agreed upon? Yes, yes? Okay. All right, <clears throat> so for set B, we have a much lower standard deviation, which means that the tests, the test marks are grouped closely. They're a little bit closer than this one. This is a higher standard deviation. So really what we're measuring when we're talking about standard deviation is consistency, right? Uh, and the close grouping of the data points. So you would say that this class is more uh, consistent in their performance. Uh, you could also say that um, the, this class, the ability levels maybe are a little bit closer, right? Uh, that sort of thing. So there's certain things you can say. Um, you know, obviously there were some lower marks and some maybe some higher marks here as well, right? The average standard deviation. So it's a measure of consistency, and that's how you do it. I'm going to get you to do uh, the first, you know, two or three questions from this assignment just like this using the formula. So it'll take a little bit of time. Uh, tomorrow, when you're done the first two or three questions of this, I will then show you how to use some technology uh, to do this for larger sets of data. Uh, it's going to take a long time for large sets of data. So I will show you how to use uh, uh, the graphing calculators and, and the graphing technology to uh, do this work for you. But I do want you to work with this formula for a few questions here today. Okay? Do you have any questions for me? So you just want us to do one, two, one, two, three, or I'll give you your time in a second. Just do one step at a time. You know? I added it all and then I divided it by five and I can't. Yeah, times okay, multiply by five, then you get the same number back and then <laughs> It's okay man. Life is not over. You just have to do that a little bit again. What's the assignment? One and five. Well, you can do one, two, five as well. I mean, I'm just expecting one and five, but if you want to do one, two, five, that's okay.